Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Thomas Brush. I'm the creator of a game called Pinstripe, and I'm also finishing up my next commercial release, which is called Once Upon a Coma. You can wishlist Once Upon a Coma in the link in the description and get a discount on launch. It's going to come to pretty much every platform you can think of, so click below if you're interested. Now, when it comes to audio in your games, first I just want to say it's like 60% of your game. It's, it's that important. Um, a lot of people might say that and you might disregard it and say, yeah, 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 I get it, but really it's about the code or it's about the art. No, seriously, sound is so crucial for your game, so don't overlook it. Now, the second thing I wanna say is audio is really one of those things that's very confusing because there's like a billion websites where you can buy sound effects from and it's hard to know if you should buy sound or you should look for free sounds or you should record it on your own. And also just the audio system in general inside of Unity is a little bit robust, a little bit confusing um, and complicated. So I wanna sort of give you a bird's eye view of how I do everything audio in my games. Now we're not gonna cover how I write music, but we're gonna handle sound effects, ambience, and how I download, edit those sounds, mix them together, and put them inside of Unity and get the systems working together to create a beautiful game with beautiful sound. So let's jump into Unity and get started. But first, before we get started, guys, I want to thank this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Thank you so much, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an incredible website for you guys to learn about pretty much anything you want to learn about. Specifically, if you want to learn about game design, it's an incredible place. Whether it's audio design for your games, or 2D illustration, or animation, or Unreal, coding, storytelling, marketing, business, management, whatever it is you need to learn about game development, it's on Skillshare. The coolest part? about this ad read is, hey, get two free months of Skillshare by clicking the link in the description. You really can't beat that, guys. Give it a shot, see what happens. I love Skillshare, it's a great way to learn about game development. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Now, really quickly, guys, uh, most of you already know this, so I'm gonna jump through it as fast as I can. Um, you're gonna have an audio listener in your scene. You really only need one audio listener. In this case, they're by default, they're put on your camera. Basically, it's going to listen for audio sources. Now, you could put an audio source inside of any object in your game. So in this case, if I wanted to put it inside of an adult, I could put an audio source here, and we can make a scream sound play and that scream will play on awake. We can set it to loop. Um, we can set the pitch to 2.04. We could bring the volume down. Um, so that's basically how audio sources work. You could put like a thousand audio sources inside of your scene and have all kinds of audio sources playing in your scene. Now in the case of Once Upon a Coma, uh, the developer, um, his name is Eric, he really wanted to have as much control over where the audio sources were. So his audio sources are actually created at runtime. So at runtime, all of our audio sources are actually generated in this nice clean list here. And we know exactly where they are and how to have control over them. Um, this was Eric's way of being able to have as much visibility uh, over the sounds that are playing, so the ambience that's playing, the footsteps that are playing, the moaning or groaning from this character that's stuck in the well here, the flags flapping, the birds chirping, the trees blowing in the wind, all of those are being controlled in this giant list here. Um, and this also allows for you to not be creating all of these various sound effects, but reusing certain sound effects when you need them. Now, obviously guys, you don't have to do it this way. Um, you can just do what I would do, which is I'm lazy. I don't want to create a whole audio pool system. So I'm just going to use Unity's proprietary audio sources. I'm going to place an audio source here and here and here and here and here and here. Um, I'm not going to create a proprietary system, but you do what works best for you. So that's really the basics of audio sources um, and the audio listener. Now let's jump into how audio triggers actually work. I can imagine thinking about adding sound to your game is the last thing on your list. So um, I wanna try and make this as simple as possible. So I'm just gonna jump through all of the various types of sound effects and music and how I do it and, and how it all works together inside of Unity. Now, the first thing I'll mention is that all of my music is created in Logic Pro um, and then I export it and then I'll do some tweaks in Audacity, um, some volume tweaks and whatnot. Sometimes I will get sound effects from productioncrate.com or Epidemic Sound, 
mainly productioncrate.com and freesound.org is where I get my sound effects. And then I'll mix them together inside of Audacity. Now, I can just open up Audacity to show you really quick um, what it looks like, but overall, Audacity is incredibly simple to use. Um, in this case, I'm looking at the ambience for Redwind Field. Um, if I wanted to, I could do sorts of all sorts of effects here. I could change the speed, the pitch, the tempo, add some echo, all sorts of cool goodies here, change the volume in various portions of it, and then export it out into Unity. All of the sound effects in Unity are controlled um, by stuff called audio loops, and this is basically a great class that the, the developer of Once Upon a Coma created. Basically what this class does is if I have a certain area, a sort of a circular area, and if I click on my gizmos here, I can actually show you where the audio loops are. Um, these big green audio loops here, this is when we want to change the music or we want to change the ambience. So when the player enters this position here, it's actually enters within the range here. Uh, the music is going to start playing, it's going to fade in. If he exits, it's going to fade out. Um, or if he enters little secret areas, it's going to change the sound effects as well. I'm not going to get into the weeds of what an audio loops script looks like, but basically all it's doing is it's changing the sound effects um, after a fade in and a fade out occurs. Um, and it's always going to be listening for the player to enter into this green range here. And all this green is is it's a gizmo uh, based on this range trigger range value, so it's 13.3 if I shrink that. So in this case, this circle over here has a trigger range of 13.3. I can scale it up if I wanted to um, or scale it down based on whatever I want the, the player's position to be. There's a few pre parameters here that we're not going to get into, but I think the most important one to remember is that you can figure out what your transition time is, um, whether or not you want it to use effects, and we're going to talk about effects in just a little bit, um, whether or not it's 3D, basically meaning does it does its volume decrease as you get away from the object? So in the case of a spider, if the spider is hissing and snapping at you, you would want um, it to be a 3D sound. So as I get closer to these spiders here, um, and let's get rid of our gizmos really quick. If I get closer to these spiders here or these flying weird looking creatures, you would want them to be 3D sounds because you don't want all of these playing at once. Um, and that's controlled by a class. I mean, you guys could create a custom class that decreases the volume based on the position of the player, um, based on the range of the player and its relative position to the actual enemy. So that's how all of my enemies um, sound effects and any audio loops like music or ambience are created. Now when it comes to voice acting in your game, and, and a lot of you don't necessarily want voice acting and I totally understand that, but you may want some like Sims-esque or Hollow Knight-esque um, mumbling for your characters. What I do for voice acting is I have a simple array, um, and again all of these classes were written by the developer of this game whose name is Eric, but I can explain to you exactly what's sort of happening here. So to demonstrate how I put together um, the various audio files um, for each character, um, here's a little dialogue audio loop trigger zone and you can see that there's actually a script on here called dialogue parser and all that does is that looks at what position we're at for our dialogue text file so in this case our text file is called Gumboisa and that's the character's name uh, and it looks for wh which position we're at so if we're at position 3 sentence 3 it's going to play this audio file Gumboisa 3 and this was cut up um, we take large audio files maybe 10 minutes long from our voice actors and actresses and I got my intern Hector Rodriguez thank you Hector he cut up a ton of sentences and each one of those sentences we dragged into various positions here so in this case we have like 94 sentences for Gamboisa so hopefully I can explain how that works if we open up Gamboisa's English text file we've got all these different text files here there's the English one so if we open that up you'll see here that we have various sentences there's plenty of different tags here like E and D and F and this helps us create a hierarchy for our conversations but I think the basics that you need to think of here is that when we hit position 4 or position 7 or position 10 which these are all just sentences separated by various tags and dialogue options um, it's going to play those specific audio files that we've placed into the components parameters 
But when it comes to actually getting voice actors for your game, um, there's no better place than Voices.com. Voices.com is weirdly incredibly cheap. I mean, based on if relative like to the film industry, um, getting voice acting for your games is, is going to cost you maybe two or three grand. Obviously, depending on the size of your game. For me, it usually costs around three grand for a full game and its voice acting. Now, obviously, this isn't localized, um, meaning the languages are translated and we have different voice actors for each language. It's just English, but that's really cheap. And again, basically, you just cut up the lines that are delivered to you through your email uh, after you pay the voice actor or actress, of course. Um, and then you take those lines and then you just drag them into your various dialogue trigger zones. That's basically how the voice acting works. Now, one of my favorite things to talk about is the audio mixer. And for those of you who just came to this video for the tutorial for the audio mixer, um, I apologize for the lengthy intro, but let's jump into our audio mixer here and I wanna show you exactly how it works. Now, there's things inside of the audio mixer called snapshots, and all snapshots are, are different kinds of profiles or uh, variations of different effects. So in this case, I have an outdoor snapshot that I use for this level, and we tell at the very beginning of the scene here, in the scene handler, we tell which snapshot it's going to use. Now, the outdoor snapshot has groups inside of it. So what do I want the voiceover to sound like? Let's say if I'm inside of a cave, what do I want the voiceover to sound like? Well, I'm going to want it to be echoey and reverby. What do I want the effects to sound like? So like um, swiping my sword or hitting enemies or unlocking doors. Well, if it's in a cave, you might want it a little bit more reverby than the voiceover. The voiceover, you might want it to be a little bit more clean. And then you also just want a clean group, which is I don't want any reverb at all. And that's basically maybe button sounds. If you click on a button, you don't want it to have reverb because it's more of a UI element. So you're going to have these different groups inside of each one of your snapshots. And you can see over here in my inspector that my effects has a SFX reverb with all these various parameters here that I can adjust and move um, to get the perfect kind of reverb in each one of these groups. And you'll see in voiceover that our reverb and our reverb delay are not as intense. So voiceover is not going to be as extreme as the effects, especially in the case of the cave here. Um, but you can see I have a, a woods one, I have an indoor like a bedroom, um, a dream which is super intense reverb and very uh, echoey, and a marsh, all sorts of different snapshots and each one is going to be um, used on certain levels. Now obviously guys there's going to be some sound effects in your game that are not necessarily going to be trigger zones, it's not going to be voiceover zones um, or ambience or music but rather specific sounds that play. So for example when the character is running uh, each footstep he takes is going to trigger a sound. Now the way that I do that is I actually do it inside of an animation tool called Spine, but you can also do it inside of Unity's new animation system where you can rig up a character and create animation event events to play those sounds. So I want to show you generally how stuff like that works. Whether it's footsteps or when I swing my sword or when I jump in the air um, or when I get on my skateboard all these different sound effects have got to be triggered from somewhere and it's a very uh, specific area and location in the animation timeline that it needs to play. I can't just set up footsteps to play randomly. They need to hit exactly when his feet touch the ground. So I'm going to show you really quick how that's done inside of Spine, but the same rules apply inside of Unity's animation system as well. So here is our character inside of Spine and again these rules can be applied to Unity's proprietary to Unity's new rigging system, but I just use Spine for this game. I'll be using Unity's uh, rigging tool for my next game. Um, but in this animation sequence here, you can notice that there's little words appearing. Footstep, 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 footstep. What those are, is those are simply events down at the very bottom of my timeline that I've told Spine to generate. So an event is there, an event is there. So you'll see footstep is right when he hits the ground the first time, jumps again. So he does two footsteps per loop. 
And all these events are, these are just basically strings, a string called footstep. And that, when I export, gets passed into Unity, and you can tell Unity with a script to listen for that sound effect. And that sound effect will play um, if you tell the script to play a sound. So if event equals string uh, footstep, then play sound footstep one or footstep two, or maybe it's a, a variation of different random footsteps that you generate in an array. That logic can be applied to swinging your sword, jumping in the air, doing backflips, hitting enemies. You can have events all over your animations um, so that the sounds happen at a very specific time. So again, sounds can be in triggers, they can be in audio zones, they can be 3D, um, they can be voiceover that's based on um, various positions in a dialogue text file, or they can just be generated from events or positions on a timeline. Uh, inside of Spine or Unity. I mean, it's really pretty basic once you figure out how everything works. Um, honestly, sound is the easiest thing for me to do inside of video games, just because I think Unity has done a really good job um, at making it as simple as possible. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll try and answer as best as I can. Also, please like and subscribe and support and wishlist and do all those cool things. If you guys want to support on Patreon, that would really mean a lot to me. You can get your name in the credits of my next video. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.